Hi, and welcome to the Digital Forum for December. Uh, this December uh, Digital Forum is being pre-recorded uh, due to that it falls on Christmas. Uh, so I hope everybody is having a great Christmas. And if you get bored or tired and want to watch a, a short video, I'm going to do a few uh, little items here in Lightroom and Photoshop um, just so that we have something going in the month of December. Otherwise, our normal meetings will be uh, in, starting in January, the fourth Saturday in January from 10 o'clock till noon. Uh, please bring your questions. I would think that you will have a bunch of new questions uh, since hopefully everybody's gotten a new toy for Christmas, uh, whether it's a new camera, a lens, uh, a plug-in, a program, whatever. Um, Digital Forum is here to help you work out your problems. And that's what we're here for. And with, with that, let's get started with uh, what I thought I'd talk about first today is how to create a slideshow in Lightroom. So we're going to um, go over to Lightroom here. And the first thing you need to do in Lightroom is, of course, have your images processed. So I'm going to create a video uh, from my North Shore trip that I did in May of this year, and mainly because I haven't had a chance to create one yet. But I have processed a lot of the images, although I did take 5,669 images. Uh, we're only going to show a few of those, uh, I believe. And the first thing I would end up doing is I rate all my images three to five, five being my best finished images, four being images that I work on, and three image, three star images are the ones that I'm going to work on. So let's go and just choose the five star images. And if you look out of that 5,669, I've got 110 images or so that uh, are rated five stars. So <clears throat> the first thing the next thing you're going to need to do really is pick out the images you want uh, to have in the slideshow. Now, I normally like to have about uh, 60 or 70 images for a slideshow. That'll do a nice five minute slideshow, something in that area. So, my first step is to go down and create a collection. So you hit the plus sign under co collections and hit create collection. Now I'm just going to label this uh, North Shore Video 2021. And I'm going to make this a target collection. Making it a target collection means that any time you pick an image and hit the letter B, it puts it into that collection. So right now it's going to create this collection, but it's going to be empty. So I'm going to hit Create. So now the next step is to go through and pick out the images that I'd like to have. Uh, now, this goes chronologically, and I we started in Wisconsin, and we headed up to the nor northern part of Minnesota, and we worked our way back down. So, uh, it's nice to come up with what's going to be your best first image. I'm going to go through these somewhat quickly, but this one here, I'm going to hit that with a B, and you can see that it says it's going to pick put that into the target collection and then move on. Um, I'm going to look and go right, sort of like that one. And none of this is set in stone because once you get into the collection, you can edit through. So we take a look here and see we shot some at the lift bridge. Um, 
that one's pretty good. And we'll just slowly click through. We saw a ship come in, so I'm going to want to add that in because you don't see the ships too often. Some of the ship stuff I shot with my cell phone, actually, and it's hard to tell that from the regular one. We did a sunrise by the lift bridge. And I got a number of neat sunrise shots there. This one here is probably my favorite shot. And you can see I've got it all finished. Or This is the one that shows a, a big um, thing in the way. So it took quite a while to get that edited out. And we got to a lighthouse or two. And then we did the Milky Way, which we got a couple of nice Milky We had some nice evenings for Milky Way. High Falls. Shot some nice late afternoon stuff, and I sort of like that as a black and white better than the color. Same for that one, although uh, we'll keep them both in and we'll see as we go. You can see we had another night, uh, and I think I like that one for a Milky Way shot. We had another su nice sunset. Nice one after sunset of a lighthouse. We were all over the place um, on this trip. We had 10 days where we really had some nice weather and got some really nice shots. So nice time to get away in early spring where the water runoff should have been higher, but it, it wasn't. People over at Gooseberry Falls watching the waterfall. Got into shooting the people as they were watching things. Split Rock. And that's about what we had. So let's go down and take a look at the um, North Shore. Video and it looks like I got a whole 23 pictures out of that. So that's going to make for a relatively short video. So let's see, I also had some that I had grabbed from the last time uh, I put a collection together. Let's see if there's anything that I grabbed that I might like better. And I don't think so. So we'll do it with just these 23 images. It, it'll be a short video, but sometimes that works out just as well. I plan to work on that those images some more to get even more uh, better, more slides from it. I just haven't had as much time. So we'll go over to the slideshow um, module. And you want to make sure that you're on your collection here. But in the very top, you have both Lightroom templates and user templates. Now, this is the template that I use, which works out pretty well. 
Now, I have a spot that I sometimes have for um, titles. If I have the images titled, I don't believe um, that any of these images have titles in it. Now, there's probably a few. Um, so you can see as you hit some, the titles are going to pop up. That's something that I could probably add more titles to it. But for today's, you can see that it, it does show up. Let's go back into the library module and I will show you like um, here is the title Fisherman at Split Rock. So I put in titles when I enter competition. So hopefully it looks like we got uh, uh, see here this one doesn't have the in the right spot so oops gooseberry falls so you just add in titles and that way they will show up now that one is J. Cook State Park, so we can copy that one and add it to this one as well, because it's the same spot. And let's add a couple more. Sort of nice to have some titles in there. Sort of hard to create titles on the fly, but uh, this was High Falls. I don't remember which lighthouse is. Oh, this is the, um, I believe it's uh, Two Rivers. We could call that the P Pagoda. Let's see. Uh, we had a good one here. Um, let's use that. Oh, let's use just the lift bridge sunrise. And here we can put that pagoda and lift bridge again. So you can see how this all works. Whoopsie. See what happens when you don't hit everything just right. Um, that's a ship through the lift bridge. And we had deleted one. So you got to make sure you hit that title. Um,
and watch out it when you if you start typing keys um you can jump through all sorts of stuff just like you saw there okay i think we've got them all listed so now we can go back to the slideshow and you'll see that they're all showing up here uh, with this template. Now you can create your own template and I'll show you how to do that. But it's nice that you can start with one right off the bat. Uh, so this is the one that I like to use. I like a nice gray, it has my name uh, or my business name and such in there, my website, phone number and email. Um, so that it burns it into everybody's mind. So let's start. So here's where you, you can find your templates. And I have different ones for different uh, types of programs that I'm going to give. Up here is where you, you adjust the template. So the very top one is Zoom to Fill Frame. So if you have that checked, it will fill the frame, but the bad part is it will also crop it off. So if you don't want to have any of your image cropped off, you, you don't click the zoom to fill. You can add a border to it. If I click that, this is a black border. You could also do, say, uh, a white border. And sometimes the white border looks nice. I'm not a big fan of them, uh, but you can. Uh, you can create a shadow, which you can see right here. It's just um, slightly seen, and you can adjust the opacity and the offset and the radius and the angle. Um, I don't want it going too much downwards, mainly just to the sides. This just shows my guides so that I know where I'm laying everything out. The, the guides do not show up um, in the uh, uh, slideshow itself. They're just there to help you have a reference where you're laying things out. The identity plate is the same thing that's up here, but this is a fancier one that I have. And if you use the identity plate, that's what I have going right down here. So if you notice, I can turn that off and turn it back on. And you can change this and edit it to whatever you'd like. Um, I happen to like this. I created this logo uh, in Photoshop and then brought it in. Uh, and I have a number of different ones. And you can edit it anytime you want to. So you don't have to use just this one. You could create something else just on the fly. You can adjust the opacity and scale of it. You could do a watermarking, which is basically what I'm doing here. Uh, the watermark will, um, you need to have cr uh, create it, and you can do like um, a gray signature or a logo or whatever. Um, I generally don't do watermarks because I don't like them in the photo. They generally will go into one of the corners here, depending on how you set it up. Um, so we'll keep that off. If you wanted to show the ratings, um, you can do that. If I clicked it, uh, it would show up somewhere in its black. So it's sort of hard to see. I believe it's up in a corner somewhere. Uh, but I don't want to show my ratings, so I only put in good images for slideshows. Then the text overlays, and that would be this right here, is my text overlay. So if I, you can see I can turn that on and off, and I actually have two of them. One right here, and the other one is up here. To create that, I'll click on this top one. Is you have um, you can use just uh, 
text itself, or you can pick a field in your metadata. And I normally pick the title field, but you have all these different sections that you can pick. So um, generally I like to do the title and then that puts it right up here. If I go to this one here, you can see it's just custom text and I typed in exactly what I wanted in the custom text. And you can put as many of these as you'd like on there. Um, I have just the two, but I have done stuff where I have stuff in each corner, what may be something in, you know, all four corners, whatever. Uh, I do have a number of different ways that I um, do things. If I have a, like the wacko competition let's see what happens uh that one just is a black one i thought that one had some stuff on it um now and you can see here's all the different ones that i have uh, and i have quite a few different ones let's see now i have to just get back to the one that we were using And you can see I have quite a few different ones. And well, that's interesting. So if we can just back up and get to it again. There we go. So I'll need to save this one because this is one that I do like. Um, so when we're done, I will show you how we save that. So here's the text overlays. Um, you can change the backdrop uh, and do a color wash or a background image. Um, I'm just doing a dark gray color. So you can add just a background color, but if you wanted to add a color wash, you can do that. Uh, here's a sort of a brown wash that goes from one side to the other. Um, I'm more happy with a just a, a nice even color background. Now you can do an intro screen, which will show up before the slideshow begins. And we're going to edit this one. And you can use either a style text or you can do a graphical um, identity plate. And this is basically an identity plate and this is how you would end edit it. Oops. And you can, you know, use whatever title you'd like. So here's that. Um, you can change the, t the font and do all that. Um, and then you also have, and you can scale it. So if you want it bigger, smaller, you can adjust it up or down, depending on what you want. It really can only be one line. Uh, you can do two lines, but it's hard to get it worked out just right. So it you just need to play with that you can do an ending screen which i usually do an ending that just shows um my name and and you know photos by and and my name uh you can add all sorts of stuff if you do music you could add some of the music stuff to it then you have a, a choice of music now I have a, a piece of background music that I created in GarageBand that I use for a lot of these shows. Uh, it runs five minutes and 46 seconds, uh, which makes for a nice show. Uh, the nice part is right down here with the 23 slides right now, this is two minutes and 32 seconds. And that's with a, uh, 4.7 second and I'm actually going to up that to five oh, five seconds and a two second dissolve 
Um, you can fit it to the music, but that would make it way too long. You can uh, have the audio balance between, if you have a video in there and music, you can adjust just that. You can do pan and zoom, so it will zoom in and out of your image, and you can set the speed of that and how how fast it's actually going to do it. We'll put it sort of in the middle. I had it on the low end, and it doesn't really do that much. Then um, you've got the playback screen. I have three monitors, although right now I'm mirroring all three, so we'll just have it play back on the one. The quality is standard, but you've got draft, standard, and high. That's mainly for the preview. And then when you finally go to play, you will um, it will create it at a, a higher quality. So generally, we're going to preview this next. Well, if you're happy with the setup, um, one thing I forgot to mention is that you can Put these in the order that you would like it to show up. Um, for me, I want to move this one down to the end because it's my favorite. These two pagoda ones. Um, this one would be better here. So you can organize these and it will go in the order that you've put them in. Uh, right now, normally they will start as capture time but you can um, change it to whatever order you would like. Once you're happy with this, one thing I do suggest is to create a saved slideshow. This saves the order and the images into a separate collection. And you can just name this. Um, I'm just going to n-s show and hit create and what that does is it just makes a, a sub collection of your main collection so this way you've got it saved it's got the order saved um, anything you do up here will be the same um, or you can delete from here or add to there, and it won't show up into this one unless you add it to it. The other thing that I do want to do is uh, save this template. And all you have to do is hit the plus sign and call it whatever you want. I'm going to call this a JRKP with titles and hit create so now i have this template saved just the way it is here so i can use it on other um, slideshows so now that i've saved it and i've saved the template i'm pretty well happy with it i'm going to preview it and i can preview it uh, just by hitting preview and then it will play in this window here so let's take a look. Now it's going to take a second as it prepares each slide.
Okay, I don't know why it ended up stopping. Um, probably a little too much horsepower. We're going to hit escape to um, stop and drop out of that. Um, I noticed a couple of problems uh, in the very beginning of the show. Um, if we go through, we can see that um, ship, and I spelled through wrong, the lift bridge. So we need to fix that. So we go back into library and get to ship. And add the TH on. T-H-R-O-U-G-H. It helps if I know how to spell. Um, then go back into slideshow. I don't know if I saw anything else, but you can take a look at it. Um, oh, I know the other one that I thought I'd fix up a little bit because the slideshow, it, it looks a little dark to me on the slideshow part. And the, the image is, it, it is a dark image, but I thought maybe I could just lighten that up a little bit that it would be a little better in a slideshow lighter. Yeah, and that definitely, and it may work better for the whole uh, image. So and just double check everything here. I think this one too, I'm gonna lighten up just a little bit more. It looks like for the slideshow part, it would be a little better if it was just a little brighter. And maybe um, when I was looking at them, some days I see things better than others. Oh. And looks like I spelled Marais wrong, M-A-R-A-I-S. So we go back into Lightroom here. So Okay, now I lost track of which one I needed to fix. M-A-R-A-I, oh, the one before. So that um, takes care of that part. We can go back to the slideshow. Now, why did we lose that? That's interesting. Did we? Yeah, it should be there. It just took a minute. Maybe we'll take a minute. Huh, that's weird. Some days things just don't quite work. We'll be working on that grammar. So that one's right. That's right. Sometimes the computer gets bogged down a little bit. So you, you want to make sure you double check uh, all your titles. Uh, when you have everything just the way you want it, um, we'll go back to the slideshow and finish checking to making sure that we have everything the way we want it. Oh, see, and here we I found another one. So it's so simple to miss stuff. Now that's interesting because there is a title there. So we're still, for some reason, Lightroom is running a little slow on showing titles all the time. But you want to make sure that you've got titles. Um, you can preview it like we did. And then when you're completely done, you can either show it right through Lightroom um, and use like the second screen. Or if you hit play, making sure you're at the very beginning, um, I'll just play a short part just to show you. We'll hit play. And what it does is it prepares all the slides. And sometimes it takes it a little while. Because sometimes little things have changed with the slides and it needs to uh, uh, prepare each one 
to play. And play is the actual full version, full quality version of the slides. And it's funny, this shows how it sometimes can take quite a while. There it goes. Usually it may have to pull those slides off the hard drive and uh, upgrade the um, shots of it. So, uh, and I normally output these as a high quality uh, image. So you don't want to do this right before you would want to show it right in Lightroom because it can, as you can tell, uh, take some time. But we're almost there. We got slide number 18 out of 23 done. But it, it is basically preparing a high quality um, JPEG image for each slide. Slowly but surely. This is like watching grass grow. And there it goes, almost done. And then it also has to make sure it gets the music lined up. And we're not even sure yet. This is what I do right when I wanna play it because I'm thinking that I may wanna extend the, the slide uh, length time from five seconds to six. So I just want to run a short portion of it to see, am I happy with it? Am I not happy with it? And, and just try it. And I like to see it full view on the screen instead of just in the window. When you do it in the window, it doesn't take quite uh, as long as you could tell the first time we did it. Because it's got to sort of line everything up and prepare everything for the final play out. And we're almost there. And this is what always happens when you do a demo. You know, I need to do a song and dance here while we wait for it to finally get prepared. There it goes. Okay, well, that's not too bad. Um, I'm not real unhappy with it. Um, I'm thinking that I want to up this one more second to six seconds. Actually, I'm going to go 6.3 would work and just make this duration almost 2.4. And hopefully, uh, we'll just do the preview because that usually will prep a little quicker and I just want to see the first couple slides here and see how that might look. I just with the panning and zooming it would be nice if it was uh, a little longer.
So that uh, definitely made a difference. Um, I, I'm happier with it, and I think we'll leave it at that. That makes it a three-and-a-half-minute uh, video. So we're pretty good. Uh, now, you could play it out this way, um, just right through Lightroom. Again, you have to worry about the um, preparing of the preview. So that can take a little while. Um, so th that's not usually the optimum way to do it. Now, if you want, you can export it both either as a PDF, which would not include the music, but just the images themselves in a PDF format with everything that you see in this template, except for, of course, the guidelines. Um, or the ideal way, at least that I like to do is export it as a video, which embeds the music and everything right into it. Um, and all you need to do is play it back with a media player. Uh, I use QuickTime on the Mac, or you can use uh, a Windows media player on a PC. So let's go through that quick, because it's fairly simple. You just click uh, Export Video. Um, you want to title it, of course. Um, I always put it on my desktop. You do have a number of different ways uh, to export it. I generally like the 1080p. That's the highest quality um, that you can do. Uh, and it will work in both QuickTime and Windows Media Player. But you do have 720p, which is a little lower quality if um, you don't want it as big of a file um, or depending on how you're showing it. That's the next best way to do it. If you need to email it, you have to watch these two. Uh, one is a four-thirds size video, which uh, will crop some of your image. So you got to watch out for that. Um, the 480 by 7, 270 is a very low quality image, but would probably work great on a cell phone. Uh, so if you were sending it for that, what's nice is it's a lot smaller file. Uh, so that can work well. Uh, I'm going to export it as 1080p. Once you hit export, you will see that there's a couple operations going right now so and then this will take because it's three minutes it generally takes f four to six minutes um to output i just like to wait till it gets down to the one step um and then you can go and you can continue to work in lightroom um and right now you can see it's now exporting the slideshow as a video. So now you can start working in Lightroom and work on other uh, parts. Uh, you can either work in Lightroom itself. Um, I'm going to go back into the library mode. Now you will notice that Lightroom is going to slow down because it is doing something where it's pretty intense. Um, and we may run into a problem and where I'll have to stop the, this recording so it can um, do the video. But what I'm hoping we can do next is, and, and this is a lot of times when I export a video, I do just let Lightroom run and um, work on a different computer or do something else. Because I got the feeling we're going to, this takes a lot of memory to do it. So I tell you what we're going to try to do here. I'm going to see if, while this is going, so I don't have to stop recording, 
I am going to show you something else. Uh, let's see, I need my Photoshop. And I'm just going to go to my second computer so that I have time while it's going. And let's cut over to computer number two. So now I'm on my other computer. This is a Mac Mini. And I thought, uh, while this runs, we'll show you a couple projects that I'm working on. Um, we can do it from this here. Let me show you. Um, I'm working on a camera club project that's sort of interesting. And I'll show you where I'm at so far and how I got to some of this. I, I've been actually going through my um, slides and getting rid of a lot of old ones. Uh, so far, I have 75 140 slide trays. And I've gone through 10 trays so far, so a little over 1,000 slides. And I'm taking them out of the trays and boxing them up um, so I can store them away. And at the same time, I'm copying them over digitally. So while I was doing that, um, it's been interesting. I've been finding all these different slide brands. Uh, the old Tower, uh, which is pretty long time ago, 3M used to do processing. Um, my dad shot a lot of slides when he was younger, and it, there was a Drury photo color. I've got a Kodachrome uh, and Ektachrome from Kodak and um, solar by another company. I'm actually still looking for, um, uh, AGFA made a lot of good slide film at one time, and I know I have AGFA slide mounts. So I'm hoping I'm gonna find some of those too. But this, I so I took all these, I scanned them in the computer, and then I basically, took them and um, made them into uh, smart layers so that I could drag them over into um, a project that I'm working on for our camera club. And let's open up that project. And I'm using um, Adobe's Cloud for the, this project because it's a nice way to um, keep them. Now, this is a rather large file, so this might take a little while. Because it's got to download it. Because it's uh, what we, what I have done is I created a. Um, it looks, uh, this is our group photo for our camera club, and we have about 35, 40 people in our club. And so I'm making it look like, of course, it's a Zoom meeting. So I'm putting them all into the slide mounts. And I really didn't think this was going to take that long because this is a separate computer, but it does have to download it from the cloud. There it goes. So as you can see, I've got, um, so far, I've got 21 uh, slides strewn out on, on a table. I'm actually going to change this background into a light box that I am going to photograph and be able to plop these slides on. But the nice part is if we zoom in, um, It's got the name and it's got me and uh, I, I we've got the different members, so I don't have to do a lot with the names. And I'm slowly building this together. Let me show you how it's built. Um, I'll take from this last row. Um, here is the slide mount. And I, if I make it go away, you can see there's the image of the person behind there. 
then that's the person. Now, I don't think, because I don't have it on this computer, I don't believe I've got the group photo. Um, we might be able, we'll see if it's on the computer, because I think I might have it in my Dropbox. So let's take a peek. Uh, here's the year end photo. So let's see if we smart sync this. Now, anybody using Dropbox, just to give you a tip, here's all the different ways and here's how you can copy a Dropbox link. The nice part with the higher, with the paid end versions of Dropbox, you can either keep it in online or you can put it locally, which will mean it's on both. And this way it saves space on the computer. Uh, and so I store stuff uh, up in the Dropbox cloud. And then um, when I want to use it, I can bring it uh, onto this computer for that short time. And let's see, I got to find the right one that I was using. I actually think it was this one. So we'll open it up. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Most of them are looking pretty good. So we, the last one I had done was uh, Sid here. So the next one I'm going to do, and I'll show you how I do it, is um, I make a selection. And actually, it helps if you zoom in a little bit just to be able to see it. Do your rectangular selection tool. Make the selection. And uh, it's a uh, command C to copy. Then I go over to the group one. Command V, um, or let's see, I'm trying to remember. I, I think it's command for both computers. And it should be here. I know it's in here. Yep, there it is. Now I need to get it out of this row because we're starting a new row. And let me close this one up so that I've got those out of the way. So here's that image. Now you can see it's pretty small, but the first thing I do is I make it a um, smart object because that lets me um, change the size of it without ruining the quality. And when I'm working with a small image like this, you do not want to ruin that quality. So now the next thing I need is the um, a slide mount. And I just have been randomly grabbing one. So we're going to grab the Kodachrome. So you can take, drag that layer up uh, onto the, the main layer and down. And it will drop the slide mount in. So there it is. Now you can see the slide mount is fairly big. We go to the layer of the person and we do a uh, command or control T for transform and transform it up to fit the slide mount opening. Of course, you wanna make sure this layer is behind uh, the slide mount so that it works. Now we have this microphone, the mute part that I don't want showing. So 
we have to watch that a little bit. But I do try to make it so that we get it a little more centered. That's looking pretty good. We just got to go over, okay, to about that point there. So then you hit enter uh, to be able to stop the free transform. Now, of course, we've got this part here that's showing that we don't want to see. So I came up with a little gimmick here that works pretty well is I take a selection and make it just a little bit bigger than what I need to hide. On here, I create a mask and I can invert that mask, which is Command or Control I, and it hides that bit that was uh, in the way. Uh, I'm not real worried about him not being exactly center because most everybody isn't centered um, too well. There's, uh, it's amazing we're a year, year and a half into um, this COVID and doing Zoom, and we still, it's, I find it really fascinating the different quality cameras and lighting that everybody uses. Uh, I'm not going to comment more than that, but not everybody's like me where I have a um, probably a $7,000 Zoom setup for doing these videos uh, because I'm using a Nikon Z6 for my webcam. But it um, for about three or $400, everybody could probably fix up their Zoom stuff and that's going to be a talk one of these days because i think we're going to be doing zoom for quite a while so the next thing we end up doing is you select both of these layers and you do um command or control g to make it a group um i then label it with the person's name and now um Command or Control T to transform it. And I found that I, if you look, you can see the width and the height. Um, and I want it at 1500 pixel. Oh, yeah, it changed. That's right, this computer uses pixels, so it makes it a little trickier. I usually have it set for inches. So what I'll end up doing is, um, adjusting this so that I size it the same as one of the other slides so that I get the right size and I could see what that pixel size would be. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but it looks like it's uh, 493 pixels, 492. So that gets me about where I want. Use the Move tool to shift it, and then I decide which way I want to rotate it, which would be Command or Control T again. And being that these are smart objects, it's not going to hurt it. I think we're going to rotate it this way and move him over just a bit. I need to do two more rows. I have about 14 more people to do. and. That's how I end up doing it. That's what I've had to do now for each of these. Uh, I've got 21, 22 of them done. And uh, it works out fairly well. Um, we'll slowly keep working on it. But doing smart objects lets me resize it without losing any quality. Um, and this way, once I photograph the light box that I want to put these on, I'll be able to take all of these as a, and make them one big group inside. Uh, I'll add all these rows inside a big one big group, be able to copy that over into the final light box photo that I'm creating and add some labeling for the club um, name and year. And we'll get this out to all the club members. But um, thought you might find this interesting how we're doing it. Um, 
it it pays to keep a few old slide mounts around because it this would be just like if you had a whole bunch of different slides of all these different people from different years and such and it um really works out sort of nice i've got to admit i got this idea from bernard hall in our camera club who did a uh, show and tell doing um the same thing but using polaroid film so um rather fascinating uh show that he had done and i go in the middle of the show i thought this is a great way to show off our camera club it gets our name in there and um, last year i did a snow globe so someday i can show how to do the snow globe so when i want to save it i can just close it out um the same with uh, this one and the slide mounts so that that works out pretty well so let's go back um to my other computer i see it's done with uh, um the the slideshow and let's take a look so let me shrink down lightroom now um here's the move uh the well the movie's in here here's the north shore i had created a short sunflower movie before um and if i double click the north shore We'll go into full screen. And here's that three minute movie.
So that that was uh, the slideshow, and um, you can see it doesn't take that long to do, and it's a, a nice way to be able to show off your uh, videos. And if you have a YouTube account, uh, the stuff can be uh, uploaded right to YouTube. And you could do that. Uh, you do have to watch what music you would end up using uh, for it. But um, YouTube does have a ton of music. Uh, if you wanted to do, um, you know, use some of their music, they have, I believe, over 15,000 uh, songs uh, to choose from. Or if you're talented, and I'm not saying I'm very talented, but I played with GarageBand and created that tune that's a little over five minutes long and was a lot of fun um, as well. So uh, trying to think if there was anything else that I wanted to show everybody while we were uh, doing this kind of stuff. Um, let me take a peek here uh, at I was going to mention to everyone that I've gotten heard about a few specials um, going on. And let me set this up so that it doesn't look quite so messy as I try to get to. Okay, so let's uh, cut over. So um, Topaz has um, a sale going on right now um, to save up to about 25% on any app, bundle, or upgrade for the holidays. Um, I actually took advantage of this uh, during Black Friday where I picked up all the Topaz uh, apps, including their video one. I can't wait to play with the video one, and I'll report back to everybody. Um, I have uh, the Denoise um, and the Gigapixel one. Um, I believe I probably also have uh, the Sharpen one, too. I don't know how much I'll use that, but we'll see. Um, and then I also got the Video Enhance AI because I've got a bunch of old videos that I'm converting that I'm hoping that I can run through this to actually upscale them and uh, make them look a little better. So Topaz has a lot of nice stuff going on, um, and it's going till the end of the year. So if you're interested, you might take a look at Topaz uh, at topaz.com. Um, I got to admit, I've been playing around with, uh, let's see this maker pipe, which, um, really is an interesting bit of equipment that, a uh, a couple of guys came up with. Um, it's really great if you're needing to build things. Um, I'm building, <laughs> uh, an outfeed table for my table saw that's on wheels, um, and it just uses three-quarter inch conduit pipe, which is pretty heavy duty. And I'm planning to make a, a three foot by four foot table that's on wheels that will go on the end of my table saw. Um, and once I get all the parts, then unfortunately I've had a problem with shipping and it was my fault, not their fault. Uh, they used an address of mine that didn't 
that I gave them that I thought they were shipping UPS and they sent it postal and the post office couldn't find me. So we're waiting for this package of stuff to come, but you can really create a lot of neat stuff. The I've got two projects planned right now. One is that table saw uh, outfeed and the other is a, um, uh, a paper uh, holder for um, shooting uh, close-ups of uh, little items. Uh, it's going to be a tabletop setup where I've got a 12-inch roll of background paper that will go um, on one of the posts or one of the cross pieces. Um, and I'm going to set it up so that it's easy to change the paper out and just have a nice small swoop background so I have no edges and I can set different objects in the center and it will be only you know um, about a foot and a half tall and a foot and a half wide this pipe is just perfect for it it's lightweight easy to carry around and inexpensive so uh, it's really sort of an interesting thing it's um, makerpipe.com <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, if we go there, you can see that you have uh, all sorts of this stuff just connects to the pipe. And you have all this. This is the kit that I actually am waiting for it to come in. And uh, hopefully I'll get it in the next day or two. Uh, and they've got a lot of different sales going, different size kits. Once I try it out a little bit more, I got some of it already. I just didn't get enough to make what I want to make. Um, I will probably order some of these bigger kits or order them in um, just the specific pieces. One thing that they make, um, they do have a nice little free booklet that you can get just as subscribing to their newsletter. Uh, I know we talked about this before, but I thought it's, uh, if you guys are bored, you'll turn it off anyhow. Um, I've got also this mini setup that uses um, coffee stirrers. And so I can create it out first in, in a small plastic setup and then um, know my measurements and everything that I want to use uh, to make it. Um, so they've got quite a few different things. Um, take a look at their website. They've got some neat stuff for um, that you can do camera equipment with. Uh, everything you need to work with it. So it's MakerPipe, uh, MakerPipe.com. Um, also, uh, we, we can't go into this one too much, but... Uh, I've been listening to Blake uh, Rudis from F64, and he does have a very nice, um, uh, I don't want to play that, uh, raw workflow uh, that, evolved, that he has uh, called the Zone System Express Raw. Um, it's really... He's got some neat stuff, uh, unique videos, a uh, lot of education. Um, there's raw masking, uh, different things. Uh, the zone system, he's got a bunch of different stuff that he's really quite interesting um, and probably worth looking at. Uh, you can buy the regular um, kits. Now, I don't know if this is still going or not. $37 for each of the programs, and you can buy them one at a time. Or you can subscribe at $20 a month and um, watch the courses online. Um, I'm planning to get some of them, uh, if not all of them because he really has some interesting stuff. I just can't quite decide whether I want to um, subscribe to it or if I want to download the images. But you got this before and after, and it's just subtle differences, but um, 
it really, you could see the difference there um, with what he could do. Um, so Blake Rudis, F64, um, I follow him on his YouTube channel, which if I can get to that, he has a lot of free um, stuff, but it's the F64 Academy. So if you look for that, um, in YouTube, you will find a ton of good um, videos that he's creating. So something else that you may take a look at and and see. Uh, he really does a nice job. He's a friend of Matt Kleskowski's, and I've really been impressed with what he's um, been able to teach me. So um, definitely something else that's uh, worth looking at. One last thing before we go, uh, Ken Warning told me about this one. If you're looking to get rid of uh, or recycle your hard drives, uh, Western Digital uh, will take them in, I believe, for free. Um, you just have to, um, if you use them, you can take 15% off your next purchase of $50 or more at their digital store. Um, you just click the recycle now and um, they will take your hard drives and recycle it. You click now and enter your information. Then you package your hard drives up and print the label, drop them off at your UPS store um, and you'll get your discount code in the mail. Uh, what's nice is that um, it's environmentally friendly, so you're, you're not adding to the landfill, which you shouldn't do. So um, they, they shred the device up. Um, your data is safe, although I would probably um, erase, make sure that I would erase the hard drive. And I would even probably drill a hole through my hard drive just to make sure it can't really easily be copied not that i'm really worried about the stuff that's in it but i have something like 25 or 30 hard drives that have died over the last five or ten years and i just keep throwing them in a corner um, this looks like it would be a good easy way without really spending any money getting rid of your hard drives plus getting 15 percent off if you're going to buy from the western digital store so um Western Digital certainly makes good hard drives. Something to consider. I also believe that um, uh, Best Buy also has, um, will take your hard drives and your, um, com uh, I don't, you know, I think even maybe your computers, but your cell phones, your hard drives, your old TV sets. Um, they will take and recycle all that stuff for you. So that's another place that I found. And if they don't work, um, I found a company called J-Dog. Um, it's a veteran-owned company that basically is um, uh, takes junk that you have, and it, it can be any junk you point. They bring a small crew to pick it up and put it in their truck. Um, I found out that they will also take computers, um, printers. Uh, I don't know. They probably would do hard drives. They probably, uh, but they do cost money. Um, a full truckload of stuff, if you have a lot of stuff to get rid of, is around a little less than $600. But um, I found you don't have to do anything other than point. Um, they bring a bunch of young guys with them that can lift. Uh, I emptied out my most of my store and filled up a whole truck for six or seven hundred dollars, um, and it was stuff that I was not going to be able to lift anymore. And they they took out scrap wood counters, uh, you name it, anything that's loose and movable, they will take. And um, really been happy with them a lot better than. Um, the what's the other company i got junk um they're nice but this j dog and i believe it's jdog.com um i called them up and they came in two days and within two hours they had me cleared out 
and it was just super. And I'm going to have them come once more because I've got a couple big printers and a pile of computers that I want to get rid of. So, um, so another way to be able to get rid of stuff uh, and and not have to lift a finger. Um, but this one does cost money. So I think that's about all I've got. Um, I don't know how long this has gone. I've sort of rambled on a little bit here at the end. But I hope everybody has a great Christmas and a good New Year's. Uh, if you have ideas for future digital forum uh, shows, um, please uh, email them to me. Uh, I'm always looking for new ideas. We are going to have some guest speakers next year uh, going this winter. So I've got one or two lined up, and I'm hoping to line up a couple more. And that should make it a little more interesting. We're going to try a couple of different ideas with these speakers. And we're going to get a wide range of speakers. So I'm hoping to do quite a bit more. So please, uh, if you have an idea for a speaker, that costs less than $100 or $150 for an hour uh, speaking with us, um, send me their name and we'll definitely take a look at them. And other than that, again, uh, thanks for watching and have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.